Taylor Swift has turned her Eras Tour. It's this big tour where she went all around the country and it was sold out everywhere. And I had the misfortune of being in downtown Nashville on a night when the concert let out. And I felt like I was in a third world country. You couldn't get a car. There were a gazillion people flooding into the street. It was mayhem. People go crazy. When Taylor Swift announced her concert tour, every woman in this office, I walk in, you know, I show up here early. I'm here earlier than almost anybody. And the, the moment I come in, this is the very, very beginning of the workday. Just as I come in from my show, all the girls are refreshing the page to try to get the early tickets from American. People love Taylor Swift. I have never in my life consciously, intentionally listened to a Taylor Swift song. I couldn't, I couldn't name a Taylor Swift song. The one, I, the one exception to that is the, uh, the one about I'm a problem, it's you, or I'm a problem, it's me, because that would make more sense. Uh, because my producers made me listen to it, to react to it on the show. But I do, I couldn't tell you what a Taylor Swift song is other than that. Well, she turned this best-selling tour into a movie. And the movie has held the number one spot at the box office for the second weekend. It surged well over $100 million. It's made history as the first concert film ever to cross the $100 million mark. Why? Why? I don't, am I going to have to go see this movie? Am I going to have, I avoided the Taylor Swift eras tour. I might have to go see it to make sense of this cultural phenomenon. Because I have an inkling of why Taylor Swift does so well. I don't mean to diminish Taylor Swift. She has a lot of things to recommend her. Is she Bach? Is she Mozart? No, I don't think so. Is she the greatest lyricist or musician or singer or dancer ever? No. Is she the most glamorous Hollywood star ever? No. Is she? No. And actually, I think that's why she's so popular. She's just kind of normal. And in, in another age, that would be fine and she might be popular. But in our age, which is so abnormal, which exalts abnormality, and bizarre things. People crave something that's normal. She's just kind of nice looking, blonde, doesn't have any tattoos, doesn't have any piercings, doesn't, when she makes statements about politics, they're relatively mild, center left, perfectly socially acceptable statement, acceptable to the ruling class, still basically acceptable to the populace. She sings songs about her ex-boyfriends. That's basically, it's pretty much it. Everyone kind of, that's a relatable experience. There's nothing particularly profound in any of the songs. I'm not sure there's very much meaningful at all in the songs, but she's just kind of normal. And being kind of normal is enough in an age that has gone completely insane. It's no secret that here at The Daily Wire, we all love, speaking of our faces, Jenny Sell Dark Spot Corrector. You might be asking, what does this product even do? Well, we've all got sunspots, brown spots, discoloration, or dry skin. With the Genucel Dark Spot Corrector, you can watch these blemishes disappear in front of your very eyes. Kimberly from Youngstown, Ohio says, My appearance has improved so much since using Genucel on my face. I love all my Genucel products and my skin looks younger. Now it's your turn to feel like Kimberly, but this sale is ending very soon. Take advantage of Genucel's most popular package, which includes the Dark Spot Corrector plus the classic Genucel bags and puffiness treatment and immediate effects all for almost 70% off. Genucel is so confident in their products that you can try them for yourself completely risk-free. If you don't see results in one day, you will get your money back. It's very simple. Go to genucel.com slash Knowles YT, letter Y, letter T. Start looking years, even decades younger tomorrow. Say hello to the best skin you've ever had at genucel.com slash Knowles YT, letter Y, letter T, genucel.com slash Knowles YT. Speaking of what people want, a very sad study came out showing that nearly one in four adults across the world report feeling very or fairly lonely. This is according to a meta Gallup survey. This is not just a survey of Americans or a certain age bracket. A new survey was taken across 142 countries, found that 24% of people age 15 and older self-reported feeling very or fairly lonely in response to the question, how lonely do you feel? The survey also found that the rates of loneliness were highest in young people. So you might expect older people, maybe whose friends have died, who have suffered all sorts of losses, have lived a little bit, that they might be lonelier. No, it's younger people, the young people who are supposed to be out and 
constantly around other young people and going on dates and just surrounded by social life. They report being the loneliest. 27% of young adults aged 19 to 29 report feeling very or fairly lonely. And the the lowest rates were actually found in older adults. Only 17% of people aged 65 and older reported feeling lonely. Why is this? Why is everybody so lonely? Part of it is that we are living in that uh, how does it affect you culture? What we were talking about at the very top of the show, the culture which says ignore social questions, ignore any uh, need for consensus, uh, any agreement on anything in society. How does it affect you? Let people do whatever decadent, divergent, depraved things they want to do. Just you do you and I'll do me and we'll, we'll just do different things. Well, a consequence of that is we're going to be more isolated. We're not going to have as much in common and we're not going to have as much to say to one another and we're not going to, we're going to feel alienated. That's part of it. But at a deeper level, why are people lonely? At a deeper level, the loneliness pandemic is directly attributable to the decline and sidelining of virtue. It comes down to that because true friendship is only possible among virtuous people. Good old Uncle Aristotle told us this millennia ago. There are, there are three kinds of friendship, we could say. Friendship of pleasure, you know, we both like meatballs and martinis. Friendships of utility, which is we, we can help each other professionally, say. And friendships of virtue, where people who are basically good, who practice virtue and tamp down vice, spend time with one another because they're both oriented toward the good and working toward the good. And when you are oriented toward and looking, working toward the good, you get happier. And when you're oriented toward and doing things that are bad, you get less happy. There's a good book by Alistair McIntyre, a, a still living philosopher called After Virtue, a highly recommended book because it, it talks about this very problem. We have sidelined virtue. We have forgotten about virtue. Many people in our culture mock the notion of virtue and they say it's illusory. And, and that's bad. And if you, if you don't care about virtue at all, you might end up in hell someday. You're going to have probably a miserable life. You're going to fall into bad habits. You're going to do all sorts of things. But one of the least discussed aspects of that is you're going to have a harder time making friends. I'm not saying that if you are lonely right now, it's because you are not virtuous. It's a social problem. If you live in, in a, just if living in a culture that denies and sidelines virtue is going to greatly increase the chances that you're going to be lonely and have trouble making friends. Because it's a social problem. It's not just about what you do. It's about what everybody does. But then there it is. There's the answer to that question. How does it affect you? How does it affect you if we pass some law? Well, because the law is a teacher and it, it molds the populace just as education molds children. Well, how does it affect you? It affects me because I live in a society and when you pass laws and when you have rituals and culture, that is going to warp the, the, the fabric in, in which I move, the fabric of the space in which I move. And that is going to create a certain kind of society. And that affects me a lot. Boy, what a great clip that was now. Hey, 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 man, you got to ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.